friend of mine, uh, actually we played football together, he, he gave me a Holy Quran and uh, I opened it and the, it was an autobiography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and honestly I, I couldn't put it down, I couldn't put the book down. I read about the Prophet and I eventually wrote a uh, book report for my, my English class in high school. Wrote the book report and uh, turned it in, the teacher, she gave me a good grade and, and she enjoyed what I was talking about, you know, and, Alhamdulillah. You know, it just felt natural to me. You know, Islam, when I, like I said, when I first went to the masjid, very first time, I felt at home. I felt at home, you know. And wallahi, I love the deen, you know. The incident that changed my heart. I wasn't a Muslim, and I was, I was trying to do the fast, the month of Ramadan. It was actually the month of Ramadan in 1983. This was before I became a Muslim. I was actually just experimenting, you know, trying to see what it was all about. And uh, I was fasting, and then when it was time to break the fast, my parents knew that I was fasting, and you know, although I was still a Christian, they supported me 100%. So then when it was time, I can remember, as if it was yesterday, we were standing in the kitchen, I had my glass of water, and it was, when it was time, I drank the water, and wallahi, I have never tasted water that way ever again in life. I felt it trickling down my whole body. Uh, the reaction of my family, you know, my partners, the, the brothers that I grew up with, you know, like I said, we were in a gang, but, you know, an organization called the Black Stone, so we, you know, we would drink, smoke, party, do whatever, we, you know, fight, whatever. And then, when I started changing, you know, I stopped drinking, you know, and I stopped smoking. And my partners respected that. Even though, you know, I was still with the brothers, I, I, I wasn't with them, you know. When, when, they, when they drank, they would buy me a bottle of Hawaiian punch, you know, and, and you know, I would sit, you know, spend time with the brothers like that. And I would also invite the brothers to come to the mosque with me, you know. So the, my, my parents, they supported it because they knew where I came from. They knew, you know, I was, you know, in the streets, in the gangs, in the prisons, in and out of jail. And they, they, saw the, they, they saw the change. They saw the difference. And they told me that they were glad that I became a Muslim, you know because it changed my life for the best. So alhamdulillah, the, my family supported me, my friends supported me, and I felt good about it. That's the main thing. I felt comfortable, I felt at home, and I, I knew that Islam was, was home for me. You know, I, honestly, in Chicago, you know, we, I knew about the Nation of Islam. That, that was really the only organization I really knew about. And um, they were respected in the community. But uh, I, I really didn't have any misconceptions about Islam. I, I, nothing negative. You know, I've never really heard anything negative about, you know, Islam. My life has changed be for the best because, I, like I said, I stopped, I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped hanging out in the clubs and, you know, doing all those things. And it, it, it cleared my mind, you know. I, I was sober-minded for a change, you know. Coming up as a teenager, I was always, you know, getting high and drinking. So it definitely changed my life. It, it cleaned me up and gave me God consciousness, definitely. You know, once I started going to the mosque, I learned that there's only one God and that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger and that we respect and love all the prophets. I feel Islam is a natural way of life, honestly. I feel Islam is truly a natural way of life. It's, it's not the religion, it's the people that might make it rigid and uh, strict, but Islam, if you follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and don't veer off, you know, try to stay on the Salat al Mustaqim, the straight path, Allah make it easy for you, you know. It's not a hard religion. It's not a hard religion at all. No, I, honestly, I, I haven't faced any discrimination. I actually, I, I, re I received more respect, you know. Being in the military, I was a Muslim, so it didn't, it didn't affect my career at all, you know, because they saw that I was sincere in what I believed in, you know. So they respected me and I respected them. So I haven't had any, I haven't had any major problems, you know, in my, in my career. Well, I feel that, you know, Islam is just always something that you can learn. It's always something new and that you can put into practice. That's the most important thing. You know, you learn, Islam teaches you how to pray, how to fast, how to wash before you pray. You know, washing and wudu and gosha, it teaches you everything before you stand before God and, and, and pray to God. You know, it's not just wake up and, and go and pray. 
you should clean yourself, get your, get your mind right, you know, spiritually, mentally, and physically. And I feel that Islam has it's opened my eyes. You know, I've traveled around the world, and everywhere I went, I always tried to visit Muslims in different countries. And, and the blessing was that everybody was on the same page. You know, it, was, it wasn't like, well, this person's teaching this way and this one this way. And, you know, everybody was teaching the same, you know, the, from the Holy Quran and the Sunnah. And that's the best way. When I became a Muslim, and, you know, the, the brotherhood was always was there for you. No matter where I went in the, in the country or in the world, I can go to the mosque and talk to people. And it was the same, same, you know, the same teaching, you know. That encouraged me to know that I was going to something good. It wasn't something that was, you know, fly by night and change with the weather. No, it stayed the same. You know, I had some brothers that I was stationed with on, in the Navy, and we were, we were close. Even though it may have been 10 of us, but it was about 5,000 people on the ship, we still had Salat of Juma every Friday on the ship. And then during the month of Ramadan, we would get together in, the, in, the, in what we call the galley, and we would, we would sit there and wait until it was time to break the fast, and then we would break the fast together. And when we went out in town, we would always be together and, you know, support each other. Oh, my experience of Hajj. Wow, Hajj. Hajj was, Hajj was something that you really, you don't know what to expect. You know, you don't really know what to expect. And um, just being around Muslims, you know, that's the one thing that attracted me to Islam was that every nationality was represented. Just like when I came here for Hajj, I saw the human race, not just one. We are one race, but I saw the human race, every nationality represented. And that the unity where you can be in place with over maybe 2.5 million people and not have uh, any major incidents, no crime, no violence towards each other because of La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. That's what unites us and that's what keeps us loving our brother, loving our sister. We, we love each other because of that, that declaration of faith. Hajj has really, it just opened my heart up more to want to share this religion with other people. You know, we, we can't keep this to ourselves. It's bigger than us. Wallahi, it's bigger. It's bigger than us and everybody deserves to, to hear about this religion and experience Hajj. You know, it's nothing like it in the world. Nothing like it in the world. And I thank Allah for blessing me to be able to perform hard. I feel Islam is a natural way of life, honestly. I feel Islam is truly a natural way of life. It's, it's not the religion, it's the people that might make it rigid and uh, strict. But Islam, if you follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and don't veer off, you know, try to stay on the Salat al Mustaqim, the straight path, Allah make it easy for you, you know. It's not a hard religion. It's not a hard religion at all. No, I, honestly, I haven't faced any discrimination. I actually, I, I, re I received more respect. You know, being in the military, I was a Muslim, so it didn't, it didn't affect my career at all, you know, because they saw that I was sincere in what I believed in, you know. So they respected me, and I respected them. So I haven't had any, I haven't had any major problems, you know, in my, in my career. So I feel that, you know, Islam is just always something that you can learn. It's always something new and that you can put into practice. That's the most important thing. You know, you learn, Islam teaches you how to pray, how to fast, how to wash before you pray. You know, washing and wudu and gosha, it teaches you everything before you stand before God and, and, and pray to God. You know, it's not just wake up and, and go and pray. You should clean yourself, get your, get your mind right, you know, spiritually, mentally, and physically. And I feel that Islam has it's opened my eyes. You know, I've traveled around the world, and everywhere I went, I always tried to visit Muslims in different countries. And, and the blessing was that everybody was on the same page. You know, it, was, it wasn't like, well, this person's teaching this way and this one this way. And, you know, everybody was teaching the same, you know, the, from the Holy Quran and the Sunnah, and that's the best way. When I became a Muslim, and, you know, the, the brotherhood was always, was there for you. No matter where I went in the, in the country or in the world, I can go to the mosque and talk to people. And it was the same, same, you know, the same teaching, you know. That encouraged me to know that I was going to something good. It wasn't something that was, you know, fly by night and change with the weather. 
No, it stayed the same. You know, I had some brothers that I was stationed with on the, in the Navy, and we were, we were close. Even though it may have been 10 of us, but it was about 5,000 people on the ship. We still had Salat of Juma every Friday on the ship. And then during the month of Ramadan, we would get together in, the, in, the, in what we call the galley. And we would, we would sit there and wait until it was time to break the fast. And then we would break the fast together. And when we went out in town, we would always be together and, you know, support each other. Oh, my experience of Hajj. Wow, Hajj. Hajj was, Hajj was something that you really, you don't know what to expect. You know, you don't really know what to expect. And um, just being around Muslims, you know, that's the one thing that attracted me to Islam was that every nationality was represented. Just like when I came here for Hajj, I saw the human race, not just one. We are one race, but I saw the human race, every nationality represented. And that the unity where you can be in place with over maybe 2.5 million people and not have uh, any major incidents, no crime, no violence towards each other because of La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. That's what unites us and that's what keeps us loving our brother, loving our sister. We, we love each other because of that, that declaration of faith. Hajj has really, it just opened my heart up more to want to share this religion with other people. You know, we, we can't keep this to ourselves. It's bigger than us. Wallahi, it's bigger. It's bigger than us and everybody deserves to, to hear about this religion and experience Hajj. You know, there's nothing like it in the world. Nothing like it in the world. And I thank Allah for blessing me to be able to perform Hajj. You know, when I first became a Muslim, I say I was uh, maybe about almost a year. And uh, I, I, I was in the Navy and I ran into a, a close friend of mine. We're still close to this day. It was like we were right back in Chicago. And uh, we started, started drinking and getting high, hanging out every day of the week. And wallahi, I, I was going back into that path where I came from. And um, that's what we did, you know, every day, you know, chasing women. And then one night, I got, you know, just so intoxicated, I couldn't even go out with the guys. They were going out to the club and I stayed home. I just stayed home. And uh, I was just sitting there, and I, and I got up, and I went to the bathroom, and wallahi, I, I looked in the mirror, I really saw my old self, and I said, you know what, this is, this is not what I want. And from that point on, I, I stopped, I just stopped, because it was always on my mind, I always, you know, kind of missed those bad habits, you know, and I, and I just wanted to see if, if it was something that I really wanted, or, or I didn't. And I, and I left it alone. So that changed my life. From that point on, I knew that, you know, this is, I, I don't need the alcohol, I don't need the drugs. It's not worth it. So I, that's when I decided to leave it alone. And then that's what I did. I, and I never went back on drinking and smoking and getting high. So, alhamdulillah. I remember uh, when I was in the Navy, my first cruise, I was new to the religion, so I was really the, like the only person I, on the ship and about 5,000 people on the aircraft carrier and alhamdulillah I met a brother who was older and more experienced and we we met haphazardly you know um, and I found out that he was Muslim and then we we started getting together and praying together and he was teaching me the Arabic and um, I remember one time we were, we were trying to find a place to pray on the ship, you know, because at that time, you know, it wasn't really accepted. And uh, we found ourselves, we would, we would pray in the little, any place where we can find a little quiet place in a corner somewhere, you know, and we would pray and, and then have something like, a, you know, a Juma, sit and talk. And then as the years went on, I saw that it was the religion was growing, you know, in the military, uh, you know. So while we started going to prayer in the, in the chapel, you know, all denominations could share the chapel, and we would go there for Juma prayer on Fridays, and it was posted on the television screen, you know, people would know what time. So this was a big change, you know. Wallahi, back in 84, it, it was nothing like that. So in, by 92, when I was, in, uh, I was stationed in Japan, 
It was a community of, it was about 10 of us. And it was a beautiful, beautiful feeling, you know. We, we, we prayed together every day in the morning for Fajr, and then we got together for Jummah prayer, and it was a beautiful experience. We, every port that we went into, we, we stayed together, and uh, even the, the local people, they respected us, you know. So some of the places we went to, there was a lot of prostitution, and uh, they would say, hey, hey, the Muslims are coming, you know, and they would, they would spread, they would open up the street, you know. We walked, you know, not being arrogant, you know, but alhamdulillah, they saw that, you know, we, we weren't into that, you know, so they respected it. And uh, we've um, traveled to the Philippines and we went to a mosque way up in the mountains, you know, and, and the brothers were glad to meet us because it was maybe their first time, you know, meeting uh, American Muslims. And we had a beautiful time. And every port it was like this, every port we went to, you know. And one thing that touched my heart was uh, my father, one time recently, he, he came to visit me and he wanted, uh, you know, we went to the mosque and so we were sitting there and then he said he wanted to, uh, he wanted to pray, you know. So I said, okay, okay, let's, let, let me show you how to uh, wash up, you know, what we call wudu, make wudu. So we went, you know, we got up and went into the bathroom and we washed up together and I showed him how to wash, wash up and prepare for salat. And then we came back in, you know, in, into the mosque area and uh, we prayed and we sat down, you know, we prayed together. And um, that, that, that really touched my heart, you know. My, my parents have always been supportive, you know. And my mother was there with us also. She was wearing her hijab. So, you know, that experience really touched my heart. That they're, they're open and I, and I pray that Allah bless them to become Muslims one day, you know. What I would like to tell non-Muslims is to keep seeking knowledge. Don't close your horizons, you know. Look for the truth, you know. Seek out the truth. Ask God for guidance, you know. And if you have questions about Islam, you know, talk to a Muslim, you know. Talk to someone that, that you see that's practicing the religion, you know. Not, not radical or irrational, but somebody that's, you know, stable-minded, that you feel you can trust and you respect, and they, and they feel the same way about you, you know. And if, if anything, I, you know, I can tell you, just go to your local mosque, you know local masjid and uh, talk to the imam, you know. If you're a woman, you can talk to the sisters, you know, and it's there. The truth is there. You just got to, you just got to go out and find it, you know. You got to, you got to seek it out. A message to the ummah. Love one another. That, that's my message. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, pass the salams to everybody, you know, and smile, you know, smile to each other. You know, you know, that's charity, you know. Don't be so rigid with each other, you know. Open your heart and your mind and your soul and, and love each other, you know. Just do the right thing and don't get caught up in all that foolishness, you know. You're strapping a bomb, you know, that's not Islam, you know. Just do the right thing. Allah bless you and uh, bring you closer. Everybody, everybody's trying. Everybody's trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the best way to do that is, is to do all the good deeds that you can do. You know, in your lifetime, you know, that's, that's the best thing you can do. And think about how you want to be treated, you know, as a Muslim, another Muslim coming to you, how, how you want him to treat you, that's the way you should treat him, you know. Same for the sisters, you know. Just be patient with each other, you know, have compassion for each other. I don't care where you come from, you know, we all Muslims, we all believe in one God and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was his messenger. So that's our bond right there, you know. So, inshallah, everybody just focus on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and inshallah we'll, we'll make it to Jannah. Thank the brothers here for um, asking me to sit down and, and talk to, to the Ummah, you know, this is truly a blessing. The brothers are professional and I, I appreciate their work and their effort. To all I would like to say, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.